Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalam ala sayyid al-anbiya ilmusalin Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in Wa man ihtada bihadihi ila yawmidin Amma ba'd Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And welcome to another series From the compilation of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah For the hadith And this week we'll be continuing From our last series that we did Which is hadith number 19 which was a lengthy hadith and I've mentioned that we'll do it in two parts just that we can be able to try and fulfill some sort of injunction on the hadith which will not be the full justice and will not do full justice to the hadith but we try to summarize it as short and brief as we can so that the reminders can be beneficial to each and every one of us and just to recap the hadith was narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu that he said one day I was riding behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his horse or his camel and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned to him and said that, Ya Gulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat that oh young boy I will teach you some word of advice and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned of the advices and again I'll just give the translation so that we remember what we are discussing and as Abdullah bin Abbas continues that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said be mindful of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you then he continues be mindful of Allah you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your side and he continues and when you ask then you ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you seek help you seek aid you seek assistance then seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him that knows wa'lam anna al-ummata law ijtama'at ala yanfa'uka bi shay that know if the whole ummah the whole nation the whole humankind and the whole humanity was to come together to assist you to help you with something and to benefit you with something they will not be able to benefit you they will not be able to help you except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written and ordained for you and alternatively Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَإِنْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَدُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَدُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ And know that if they were to come together and gather upon harming you, they will not be able to harm you except with something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you, except something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you. And then Rasulullah some closed it off and said, رُفِيَةِ الْأَقْلَامِ وَجَفَّةِ الصُّحُفِ The pen has been lifted and the pages have all dried up. So this is the hadith that we've been doing from our last series and it's a continuation from the advice that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned to his beloved cousin Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu. I touched about our true success about bringing our consciousness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also mentioned that we should not look back or look at someone being small or being a youngster that we should not be able to teach them or we should not be able to advise them. Because of scholar mentioned, as Abdullah bin Abbas, he was just a young boy in his early teens at this time when this advice was given to him from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we all know who he turned out to become. And he was referred to as the, the one with the ocean of knowledge. And he is referred to also in Arabic as Ra'is al-Mufassiri. He is the leader of all the Mufassirin and all, the tafs, all those who give explanation for the Quran. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi gave the advice to him even though he was such a small and young child. So next part, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned from where we left off, Rasulullah said, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ That when you ask, ask of Allah, when you seek help, seek help only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will start our reminder from here in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa from his hadith. And this in two regards, as we know, the word itself, it's general, it is clear. There is nothing that we need to understand that someone tell us, ask only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this includes when we make our supplication, when we make our dua, calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a common mis misconception that we have as Muslims is that when we make dua, when we hear of the word dua, we only think that dua only has to do with asking about the hereafter, asking for a jannah or asking about things that can benefit us in the hereafter. In fact, 
Yes, that should be our primary aim and primary objective when we make dua, asking for our success in the hereafter. But we are in this world. This world was used, is a means for us to gain and achieve in our success in the hereafter. So whenever we make dua, we should be able to, as much as we make dua and prioritize your hereafter, we can also make our dua and should make our dua only for Allah, only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our worldly gains or whatever we want to achieve in this dunya, in this world. If we are a student and we want to achieve success in our exam, we want to have A+, plus, we want to be graduate be graduates with degrees we need to ask our success from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not mankind so similarly in this whatever we want to achieve in this world once it is from, from the good things then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from from that also we don't turn and ask towards insan we don't turn and ask towards mankind so similarly if someone is in need of wealth or someone is in need of food they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turn to the creator and supplicate before turning to mankind or before asking of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the one that can soften the heart of mankind that mankind will be able to bless you with that food. The famous Imam, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah, he used to say, he used to make such a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to say that, Ya Allah, just as you have protected my face from prostrating to others besides you, you have preserved my face to only to only prostrate and make sajjah towards you. So, O oh Allah, similarly, protect it, protect my face from asking any other besides you. Protect my face from asking other people besides you, from asking help from others beside you, asking anyone else for anything besides you. And it's a fact, it's a reality in our life. The more we ask of mankind, the more we go to someone, we ask them. We go to our neighbor, we ask favors from our neighbor. There will be that one day, there will be that one time when they will become so disturbed or they become so perturbed and so stressed over us asking. They will get so upset, as a matter of fact, and they will dislike us and they will hate us for us continuing asking them. And they will get angry and start saying bad things to us. But on the contrary, the more we ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. In fact, the less we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the less Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have that attachment to us, so the less Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy will be able to shower upon us. Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned more or less to the meaning that when a servant is constantly seeking and asking and making supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the malaika, the angels in the heavens and the earth, they recognize that servant voice and they will also intercede for his dua to be accepted. But when a servant who was not constant in supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is in difficulty and he calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi, Rabbi, my Allah, my Allah. The malaika will find his voice strange. They will not recognize whose voice is this. They will not recognize is this person a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have not seen, we have not heard of his voice before. So then they will not be able to even intercede on your behalf. They will not be able to say, oh Allah, such and such servant is asking of you. This by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all known. But yes, the intercession of the malaika will not even be there. So that is why we need to constantly ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our own betterment, for our own succession. Similarly, instead of us asking of others in this dunya for our success, we ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, we ask only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask help only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't ask any other creation which is also in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone may say, <clears throat> someone may ask, why do we have to ask from Allah? Why we ask someone in this dunya? They can help us. He's a wealthy person. He's an imam. He is the president of the masjid. He's a sheikh, so and so. He's a Muslim. He can help us. But, let us look at the reality. When we ask of someone, when we ask someone for something, we are humbling ourselves in front of them. We are showing humility towards that person because we are showing our need for them. When in all aspects of our life, we should have that humbleness and we should show that humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is best for us to, sh to, it is more befitting for us to show our humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, that is why it is only best to ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not ask of someone else. And with that regard, it can even bring us as asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a great form 
is as, as a that an act of worship. It can be as a form of worship, as an act of worship, because asking from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it emphasizes and it substantiate our tawheed, our oneness, and in acknowledging Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because we are showing and manifesting our needs only to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that we recognize no other being can assist us, no other one is there that can as help us and and save us from that difficulty that we are in and it will be an act of worship because we recognize in our oneness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strengthening our iman at the same time moving on to the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi continue after mention of asking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that rasulullah sallallahu said that no the advice he was addressing was has abdullah bin abbas he said فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ أَلَوْ وَجْتَمَعُوا أَلَا أَيَّنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ That know that if the nation were to gather, if the ummah and the entire nation were to gather to benefit you with something, they will not be able to benefit you. Here we understand clearly that it shows us why we need to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why we need to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why we ask only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why, like as a very big of the hadith, why we need to keep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our side, why we need to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let him be part of our life. Because we know Rasulullah SAW saying here, closing off the hadith, say that if the entire humanity, 7 billion people on the face of the earth were to come, to come together, they gather together, they join hands together, to harm that one being, to harm that one person. They will not be able to harm that one person except if it was already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why it shows us again the importance of why we need to ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why we need to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that our harm, our benefit, whatever is there, the decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showered upon us. If we are to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without realizing why we worship Allah, why are we so endowed and endeavor ourselves with the remembrance, with the dhikr, with the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We have no reason why we're doing it. If we're only doing it because, oh, my father did it, my four parents did it, my friends are doing it, then we are missing out from the, the great aspect of having the tawheed in our heart of that oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our heart in fact we even miss not from the sweetness of iman the sweetness of our belief that we will not understand because we do not know why we are doing it why we are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here this hadith is showing us and telling us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being the only one that can do anything against entire humanity against entire creation and entire mankind and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam closed off the advice to Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas. He closed off the advice saying, Rufi atil akla ma jaffat is suhuf. That the pens have been lifted and the pages have been dried. Which is referring to the Lawh al-Mahfuz, the sacred tablet, which has everything recorded and was pre-written by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun. It has all been written there and it will not change. And... If we are to have this realization and if we are to we have this confirmation in our heart, then we will know that nothing will be more powerful than having that connection and building that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it will bring tr true peace and true, true tranquility in the heart of every believer that everything that will happen was already known or it is already known by the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why when people will be faced with difficulty, they will understand that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it may be a form of a test, whether it may be a form of a blessing, but it is only from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, let us not think that we cannot have tests, we cannot be tested because we are mu'min. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran himself, nas amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that to mankind think that you will be left alone, by saying that we believe in Allah and they will not be tested. In fact, we are going to be tested. It is from the sunnah and tariqah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is from the method and the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's doing. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test mankind 
in various ways. But when we have the realization and we understand that this was all from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then whatever test we'll, we'll go through, whatever difficulty it may be, we will understand it's just a passage of time. Inna ma'al usri yusra. That really with every difficulty will be ease. And similarly, if we're going through gracious time, we also should realize that it is something that will not last. It is only temporary. It can be here in the, in the evening and the morning we get up. We don't have any of those wealth. So that's why we need to have the realization that everything is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's control. We, pray, we have, and for this, we have to build our realization. Or we have to build our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Build our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become true ibad, true servant and true worshippers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, devoted solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. And even so, even with all the difficulty, with all the hardship that we will go through, with all the tests that we may have, then we all also know this is a source of building our strength, building our iman, and building our drawing us. Allah reminding us that we need to draw closer towards Him. Maybe because at those tests is a time when we were foregoing Allah subhanahu wa taala. We were neglecting our duties, Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Allah subhanahu wa taala reminded us in Surah Baqarah also. That that we will be tested and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certainly that he used emphasis here that we will certainly more certainly test you with things of hunger with that of fear with that of loss of property wealth our life loss of life and we will also test you with that of crops whether you're a farmer you will be tested in various things but on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is sabirin, and glad tidings of those who have patience. So the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is showing us that we will have tests, we will have trials, we will have complications within our life. But we have to realize that our reliance need to be solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if we are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will certainly take care of us without any help. We seek help only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we understand that no good, no harm, nothing, no matter how small it may be, how insignificant it may be, nothing can befall us except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when our reliance becomes sorely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu says in the Quran, وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَزْبُهُ then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for such person who are whose reliance is solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be his aid, his assistance, will always be by his side. Like for example, when Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was about was thrown into the fire, when he was catapulted into the fire, then Angel Jibrail alayhi salam came to him and asked him, Do you need help? Ibrahim alayhi salam said, as from you, I don't need any help. Did Allah send you? He said, no. And Ibrahim said, as from you, I don't need any help. But from Allah, yes. And the famous dua, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for me. He's the best of those who, who complete all of the affairs. So, my respected brothers and sisters, the bottom line of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminded us here, is that we all have to make our reliance and we all have to put our trust solely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We build our relationship and our taqwa, our conscious, our closeness and our ibadah solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We build our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our side, then no one else can do us, do us anything. No harm can come to us except by that command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we know uh, that only everything that comes is from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we will live in no despair. We will have, we will never lose hope of our mercy and we will never be despondent that, you know, a sad reality that we have today, that people will want to take their own life or have suicide, commit suicide. Then we will not reach to such an extent because we know it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why we recite the dua at any time whenever there is a calamity. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. From Allah we came and to Him we shall return to remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of everything. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcoming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can build our connection, our relationship with Him and we can have the understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that takes care of every affairs. And 
We build our trust in Him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be sufficient for us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa akhirah da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.